Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. I am confident that I never sent nor received any information that was classified at the time it was sent and received. The facts are pretty clear. I did not send nor receive anything that was classified at the time. Welcome to the sing-along. Follow the bouncing lies on the uh, political circuit. Of course, we're all excited that Hillary will finally get uh, her due, that the um, Dick Tracy's and the FBI are going to peruse the uh, emails and they're going to find the secrets that she sent to God knows who. You know, Hillary top secret emails found, the FBI seizes drives, DOJ takes possession of satellite images. DOJ, it may as well be the department DOO. Department of Obama. What do you mean DOJ? Who runs the DOJ? A woman handpicked by Al Sharpton. <laughs> a prosecutor from New York City picked by Al Sharpton to be the attorney general is now going to look at Hillary Clinton's emails. They're friends. They're sisters. They're sorority mates. So what do you think this is all about? I told you this before, and I could be wrong, but I'm usually right. On, on political issues, I'm usually right. On personal issues, I have a pretty bad track record. But let me tell you something. This is going to help Hillary, not hurt her. I know you're all sitting here saying, oh, God, no, don't say that. Finally, the Clintons are going to get what they deserve. They're going to duly examine them. Then the FBI will come out with a press conference with a huge fanfare. Well, we have examined the two emails of the 30 million that were hidden and thrown away in the garbage. And... Uh, not only did they not contain classified information, but they contained information that was helpful to America's security interests. And here they are. They'll make it up. You're now living in a banana republic. Welcome to the Savage Nation topic one. What can you say about it? What are we going to speculate whether it's going to prove to bring be our downfall, blah, blah, blah. So the question is, what is plan B for the Democratic Party if Hillary does in fact have to withdraw from the race? Remember now, it was the Obama administration's attorney general, DOJ, who has made this fanfare. So how could you actually think that Obama is that anti-Hillary? Or you think he's going to damage his own party? How foolish can you be to believe that this is not orchestrated with Hillary in mind? She's going to come out looking better than ever. Now, number two, who will the Dems re run instead of her? Let's say she drops out and there really is something. If the FBI does cover up for Hillary's email, well, okay, then she'll run. But if the FBI uh, doesn't cover up for Hillary's email and they make it look good or whatever, who will the Dems run? The Dems run. Who will the Dem party run? And number two, the next thing is Amnesty International wants to decriminalize prostitution, which they call the sex trade. And there's a big hullabaloo about this. Amnesty International wants to decriminalize prostitution. And there's a lot of outcry from f so called feminist groups who say that it's tantamount to advocating the legalization of pimping and brothel owning. Now, I don't have a firm opinion on this other than it shouldn't be legalized, should not be. That's the only opinion I have. But I know that there are mixed opinions on this. In that, next to the political world, it's the oldest profession. I mean, prostitution is the world's oldest profession. I would say next to religion, but I would say next to politics. And so you have to ask yourself, really, since uh, prostitution has been going on since before biblical times, should it be legalized because it's here anyway? What are the arguments for or against legalizing prostitution? Topic number three. After the nuke deal with the terrorist state of Iran, European companies are rushing into Iran to do business. I can give you a list of the businesses that are dying to do business with the terrorist nation of Iran using the money that is going to be released by uh, Barack Obama. 
including big uh, heavy earth moving equipment, deep earth tunnel boring machines, stuff like that, in order to help them hide their nuclear uh, you know, desire. So this is interesting. A result of the release of the funds, as you well know, it's business as usual, and there's nothing you can do about it. The California uh, government is a single-party system. It's a communist dictatorship, a mild one at that right now under Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown is the ultimate demagogue, uh, and the ultimate demagogue who thinks he isn't a demagogue. I actually think he doesn't believe he's a demagogue. Wildfires are raging in Northern California, not too far from my home. They now jumped into Napa County, and he's blaming it on global warming. I guess he hasn't read the history of his own state, and he should know that California has suffered fires, fires uh, going back uh, way even before his father was governor. I don't know what they forget history in this state. Everything conveniently fits their lie, the big lie about global warming. And you know, Governor, it doesn't really matter to me what caused the wildfire. It could be illegal aliens growing marijuana in the woods that started it. It could be a number of things. Your job is to put the fires out, not to tell us about global warming with more of your malarkey, Governor Brown. Put the damn fires out. That's your job. Not to tell us who caused it, because you're never going to tell the truth anyway. Topic number 53,000 on the Savage Nation, and believe me, I have many, is this. The nuttiest, most leftist professors in America, a rogues gallery of idiocy, put together by Emma Colton of The Daily Caller. It's unbelievable to me. When I read to you the names of these professors and tell you what departments they're in, if you go, I mean, there are departments that they made up. So in order to fill them, they have to find stupid people who have no credentials whatsoever. And they say things that you're going to have a kick out of. It'll make you happy today. It'll make you very, very happy on the Savage Nation. I open the lines up. Three topics for you to call about. Is the FBI going to cover up Hillary's email scandal? Should prostitution be legalized? And any of the other topics I touched on, the phone number is 855 407 I don't really want to read the terrible stories that got me sick this morning, except one. There are Christian refugees in the Middle East who have fled ISIS, the Hitlers of our time, the Hitlerites of our time, and Obama will not let the Christians into America. Headline, Yazidi refugees escape ISIS, but find door to U.S. asylum locked by Barack Obama. They're facing the threat of execution in Iraq, and these Kurdish, Kurdish Christian individuals that lived and stu still live throughout Iraq, Syria, Turkey, and even Armenia and Georgia, who have applied for asylum in the U.S., are being rejected by Barack Obama. Muslims only need apply. Is this what old Obama meant by transforming America? Is that what old Obama meant when he said he's going to transform America, amongst many other things? Turn it from a Christian nation to a Muslim nation? Oh, I don't mean overnight. No, I don't mean that. Not at all. But what exactly did old Obama mean when he said he was going to transform America? And he slammed the door shut on Christian refugees from the Middle East. Of the tens of thousands of Yazidi Christians uprooted from their homes by the Islamo-fascists, only 10 families have been granted asylum by Barack Obama in the United States. Did you hear this? 10 families... Meanwhile, millions of illegal aliens swarm across the borders. Millions of them swarm across the borders. And Jerry Brown is just happy as can be. Happy as a clam to give them everything that they want. Give them anything they want. Health care for children. A new uh, bill came out just uh, yesterday. A new law that will erase the word alien from California's labor code. Whatever they want, they get. Meanwhile, citizens have to pay for it. Who is going to pay for this, Mr. Brown? Who will pay for your state-funded health care for illegal alien children, Mr. Brown? Tell me, who is going to take care of the illegal aliens who are coming in who are not so nice, such as those who killed Catherine Steinle? And whatever happened with the Mexican national who had previously been deported several times uh, from the, not only San Francisco's sanctuary city, but other places who came back and killed Catherine Steinle. And who's federal, what federal agent lost her gun? Which was the federal agent who lost her gun? Why does she still have a job? 
Tell me why a federal agent who loses a forty caliber handgun still has a job the next next second. Who was the federal agent? What happened to that case? Why is San Francisco sheriff still in his Mickey Mouse costume pretending to be a sheriff? These are some of the topics on the Savage Nation. 855-400-7282. And by the way, I want to talk about the, uh, the Hillary thing because it's a big story. I mean, it's a huge story, but you know it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, the top secret emails found. FBI seizes the drives. Obama's DOJ takes possession. What does that mean? They're covering it up like they did Solyndra. The FBI grabbed all of Solyndra's records right after they declared bankruptcy and left with $500 million unaccounted for of federal money, by the way. Did anyone from Solyndra ever go to jail? No. They reorganized under other names, other fake solar companies, and they're still in business. It's that simple. So I don't think anything is going to come of it. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I just sense that this is coming from Obama himself. And I think the FBI is not as reliable as you may wish. It's not the FBI of the days of Elliot Ness and J. Edgar Hoover. God, if only J. Edgar Hoover could be back. I don't care whether he secretly wore a dress. At least he made America safe. That's all I can say to you. WABC, John, on which topic do you call a savage nation? Hi, Mike. I, I'm against prost legalized prostitution. The people who try to push it are the ones that are saying that we need tax revenues. That makes me a pimp. Everybody who benefits from those tax revenues becomes a pimp, and I don't want to be a pimp. I had a debate. Well, that, that's clear. That's plain English. That's plain English. So you, as I, object to prostitution on on a, on a moral basis. Is that correct? On a moral basis, on a social basis, on an economic basis, it doesn't work any which way. It's bad for mo for the morals. It's bad for the family. It's bad for marriage. Uh, what we should do is enforce the... I'll tell you the worst part about legalizing prostitution. It's like legalizing marijuana. It will make young people think it's, it's okay. And that young girls who are down on their luck with money may just think, what the heck, it's legal, I may as well do it. And they will sell their soul to the devil for a few quick bucks and, and destroy their lives forever. That's the problem. The state, the federal government especially, does not want to um, emphasize the moral basis of our law. Well, no, Denmark Denmark has no morality. Look how Denmark worked out. Look what's happened to Denmark since they eschewed all morality. I mean, many people go there. They love it. They like the prostitutions, prostitutes in the, uh, in, in the doorways. I don't know. I've never been to Denmark. It looks like the canals have been uh, uh, somewhat uh, contaminated. But the thing is, the architecture is beautiful. But look what happened to the soul of Denmark once they eschewed morality. See, Ob Obama envisions... A transformed America, which is gutted of its of its foundations, gutted gutted of its foundations, including its link to morality. You understand that, of course, don't you? And of course, the Judeo Christian uh, ethic has been un completely undermined by the theory of legal positivism. People seem to think that there's no longer a moral basis to the law, and when there is no moral basis to the law, you don't have law because all you have is dictatorship, the will of the president, the, the governing body, whatever. That's what you're left with, and that's dictatorship. That's exactly why Obama has tried to knock off religion in America. He doesn't even make a pretense of going to a church, does he? Well, he does. How long has it been since the first family has even faked going to a church on a Sunday? Tell me how long it's been, how many years now? The Obamas don't even fake it anymore, do they? At least the Clintons had a fake Bible that they had made up in Hollywood an oversized Bible with a large cross for, for the world to see. But at least they faked it. This, this couple doesn't even fake it. They don't care about God. There is no God to them because they are demigods. Thank you for the call. We're running short of time, as usual. I hope I trigger some thinking and a conversation. One is the Hillary Clinton deal. I don't think it's going to come to anything. The FBI will cover up for her. And what's interesting about that is they didn't cover up for Petraeus, a true American hero. General Petraeus did almost nothing wrong, and Obama crucified him because he wanted no possibility of anyone in the military standing up to his disastrous destruction of our national security apparatus. I'll be back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I had a special forces friend call me this morning going crazy over the email thing, and I said, look, I can't do a show before a show. He was incensed. He was going crazy because some of the sensitive emails that Hillary used on her private server involved the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which is, uh, of course, a secret agency based in Springfield, Virginia, that is tasked with producing and analyzing images from secret surveillance satellites. So what does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? This agency played an important role in, in analyzing images of Osama bin Laden's Abbottabad compound in Pakistan prior to the U.S. raid that killed him. So in other words, if you watch TV shows like Homeland or any of those, and they show a satellite, a high-flying satellite, that can literally pick out someone, a pack of cigarettes in someone's hand, that's what we're talking about. So she transferred some of that. The Post's sources state that the Hillary emails included, quote, references to information related to satellite images and electronic communications. That sounds very serious. And the question is, even if no information from the server was intercepted by a foreign power, while she was transferring it on a private uh, server, it is still a problem for Clinton. Let me tell you why. If you look at the Espionage Act, it is a criminal offense to negligently mishandle classified information. You do not have to knowingly share it with unauthorized people. The fact that you negligently handled it is a violation. And then she deleted over 30,000 emails. Why did she delete them? She said they were all personal. Why should we believe her? Okay, so where will this go? I don't know. Petraeus, General Petraeus, one of the great American heroes, led to a criminal prosecution. They destroyed his life. And it doesn't come anywhere near what Hillary did? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. I think we have to, as a nation, really ask ourselves some hard questions about really? how we truly feel about and treat each other. <laughs> and the... <laughs> level of vitriol and insult that we yeah, see on the right, internet right. Poor uh, is is so flower. distressing to me and it goes exactly yeah. after people yes, and as so president I would do my yeah. very best to model the kind huh. of behavior that oh I God. would hope all of our citizens would have I'm not asking people to like everybody I'm asking oh. people to be respectful uh -huh. and I am asking people to be kinder toward each other you mean the way you're kind to american national security yeah, your husband was certainly kinder to monica Lewinsky than anyone else could have been in the white house he treated her very kindly and you treated him very kindly when you think about it so she's not really fibbing she's a kind woman she looked the other way while her husband was uh being kind to an intern so i, I don't think she's fibbing here you know you look at this news all you can do is take it with a grain not of salt but of Soma. I mean, I need Soma looking at this news. You get up every day and look at this crap. You can get sick from it. The Brahmins pressed and drank Soma. In uh, it was called and, and and its name was Indra. I see it every time in history, all through history, civilized history, recorded history. Let's put it that way. People have always sought relief from the vicissitudes of life, the ups and downs of life. No matter what it was, in every society, people sought relief. For the ancient Brahmins, they drank the Soma. Its name was Indra. The hemp-eating yogis called it Siva. The gods of Mexico inhabited the Piotl. The Persian Sufis discovered Allah in the wine of Shiraz. The shamans of the Samoyeds ate toadstools and filled themselves with the spirit of Num. And here in America... As written, uh, <laughs> I found this in an old Aldous Huxley book. 
The swing door to the tavern opened and shut, opened and shut. God thirsty from the spiritual deserts of the workshop and the office, men came as to a temple, which I thought was funny. I was going through my journals from the 60s, which will be published next winter by WND Books. And it's true. I mean, I, I made a note of that. Any time in human history do you think people lived peaceful, happy lives? We're living in relatively peaceful times right now, by the way, where most men can go around without firearms. This is a, a re very unusual time in human history, by the way. It seems like we're descending into a jungle. And it is, for example, uh, in places like Ferguson, which are being funded by George Soros, a jungle. Baltimore became a jungle because of the policies of Obama and Holder and the police chief. I don't have to name them all. You know who they are. We understand what could happen, but we're still living in fairly peaceful times. And let's hope it stays that way. I don't know. But the big issue now is national security. To me, the number one issue in almost all elections is national security. It always has been. It always will be. And there is no question in my mind that virtually any Republican would be better on national security issues than any socialist Democrat Islamist. Because every Democrat is a crazy thing we're living through. There is a tendency to look the other way when Islam is involved, a tendency not even to name the enemy, not even say what religion they're proscribe, uh, uh, practicing. They will not ever identify their enemy. It's true for most of the liberal Republicans as well, by the way. They have the Romney disease. But I think that Trump would make a great president. Ted Cruz would be a fair president. That's if he could ever survive Congress. And I don't think he has. I don't think Ted Cruz has the charisma to do the deals that are needed to be done to straighten this country out if you want to get into the election. Trump has a force of personality that could be like an LBJ. I know no one's made the comparison yet, but I just did it for you. It's probably going to be stolen before it leaves my breath. But if you look at the history of how deals are made in Congress, it's always done from a wheeler dealer. And LBJ was one of the best wheeler dealers in history. Those of you who know I'm talking about Lyndon Baines Johnson. He had been in Congress for 27 years before Kennedy was killed. He became president. He had a tremendous sway over Congress. He knew how to work the back rooms. He knew how to shake hands. He knew how to bend people to his will. He knew how to horse trade, in other words. He had tremendous will. He was a tall man. He was a strong man. And he had the, the charisma in plain English to move Congress, congressmen and senators. Trump could do that. I don't think Cruz could do that. I know Rubio is like a child. They would laugh him out of the auditorium, but let's get rid of it. I don't need it. Rubio couldn't achieve it. Uh, who else is there? I don't even remember their names anymore. Oh, Christie. I don't know if, uh, I don't know, maybe. He's a politician, maybe he can get things done. Who else was on the stage? Curly? I don't think so. Curly, they looked, they closed the door to Curly, Rand Paul, as good as his ideas are in some areas, and, and, and kind of, you know, zany in others. Who else was on the stage up there? Uh, Huckabee? Eh, don't know. Who else was on the stage up there? I don't remember anymore. This... Who? Cassidy. Why are they making such a big, big deal out of Cassidy? He's a regional guy, that's all. He doesn't have national charisma. He can only do a local, a state thing. That's it. I made a big deal out of him. What, because he was didn't yell, he didn't scream, and he's a good manager? That's not what we need. We need more than a good manager. Let's go down. Carly Fiorina? Who knows? Maybe she'd be a good secretary of labor. Maybe she'd be uh, a I don't know, a good cabinet appointee, but not president. You need somebody who can, look, let's go back to the main point. Let's not get lost here in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the whole deal. Trump could move Congress to straighten out the nightmare that Obama has created in this country. I don't think the others can. So let's go back to the, the issue we're talking about really here, which is Hillary's using emails, storage really of emails on a private server. And the fact that they're saying she could be subject to civil and criminal penalties. You read all of this, right? But they've already changed the, the, uh, the category of the emails. They were not top secret when she did it. Then they became top secret afterwards. So although they're top secret now, they weren't top secret then. And she might have transferred them while they weren't top secret. She didn't intend to transfer them while they were top secret because they weren't top secret. They were untop secret.
She thought that they were not secret, but they weren't really secret. They became secret after she did it. And had she known that they were going to be secret after she did it, she wouldn't have done it when she did it and have no idea what was on them. And although I gave away uh, satellite surveillance imagery of, uh, of, of a soccer field in, in Pakistan, it was nothing to do with what you think. It was because on that very soccer field, there was a particular hairdresser that my husband liked. And we're trying to locate the hairdresser for an upcoming conference. And we, we located the hairdresser walking around the soccer field in between games. That's all the email was about. Don't make a big deal out of it. It's the vast right-wing conspiracy trying to destroy a good woman. As you know, I'm a kind and gentle woman, better than any Republican white male. And so therefore, you should elect me because it's a smear job. 855-407-282. Which one of these do you use? Do you use alcohol? Do you use peyote? Do you use wine? Do you use uh, do you use Siva? Do you use Indra? Everyone listening to this show, you know, has a way, something that they use to to de-stress. What what do you use? That's an interesting question. Most Americans would say, "Oh, I have a beer. I have a glass of wine." Some would say, "I drink scotch." Some would say, "I drink vodka." Some would say. I run. Some would say I believe in God. Some would. What, what are you do? You, that's an interesting question. Everybody does something to relieve the stress of life. I go on radio every day to relieve the stress of life. I dive into stress to relieve my stress. So for three hours a day, I I engage in this horrible world that we live in, and I find that it's a great stress reliever. Speaking of stress relief, I'm going to take on more stress next week than I have in a long time because I'm going to travel to New York City, my hometown, my original hometown. And I intend to broadcast from WABC a few of the days next week. I'm going to be staying with friends uh, outside of New York City and in a secret location and come in every day for the show. But the thing is, I'm looking forward to Manhattan in a, in a great way. I really am. I, I already have a restaurant picked out for the first night, Monday night. I won't tell you where it was. I'll tell you about it. You know, in order for security reasons, I'll disclose where I'm going the day after I went there. And I'll tell you what it was like going back so many years later. Does anyone know where? Wait a minute. Let's play 20 questions here. Let's roll the roulette wheel. Knowing how obsessed I am with food and what kind of foods I like, who could guess which restaurant I'm going to go to on Monday night? I'm not going to tell you. So let's do it generically. What will I be having on Monday night? Will it be um, African food? Chinese food, will I eat souvlaki? What am I going to eat? Greek food? Tuesday night, what am I going to eat? Wednesday night, what am I going to eat? Thursday night, it's got like a feast. It's a movable feast. It's not as though I'm deprived here in the Bay Area. I mean, last night I went to a diner. I'm so tired of restaurants with waiters and tables and bread, I couldn't take it. And I know I'm launching into you know stuff that uh, is funny for me. I'm so not interested now in, in the news. I don't know what it is. It's August. And I'm a little space cadet on it all. You know, you look at it and it gets you a little crazy. You get angry. And you don't really know whether any of this is going to stick come after Labor Day, let alone when the election occurs in 2016, which is a year from this uh, Labor Day, you know, a year after. The, the, who, the, who You're going to think they're going to remember? The average jerk out there is going to remember Hillary's emails? It's too far ahead which is why I think the DOJ took the emails now. It's to burn it out by then. They know that the intention span of an American is that of a, uh, uh, a butterfly. And they know that you won't remember this come Labor Day this year. So they're going to burn it up now, let you have fun with it now, tear it apart like a cat. It'll be forgotten by then. That, that, that's the whole problem. So living well is the best. I think living well is the best revenge. I... I can I divulge something on this show right now that I swear? Well, let me not go there. There's no point in swearing. I tell you the truth every day, so why go on a, a stack of Bibles? I keep a Bible right here, okay? I keep the Holy Scriptures next to my desk every day. I do the best I can. A saint I'm not, as you well know. But I, I, I have to ask you something. I came to some conclusion yesterday. It was sort of like what they call a satori. Um, uh, maybe I shouldn't divulge this because I, it's, it's the opposite of what I said I was going to do. I said I care too much. My problem is Michael Savage's problem is he cares too much about the news. He cares too much about his show. He cares too much about his country. He cares too much. The man who cared too much. And I can't take it anymore. So I made a decision so I'm going to care less. 
I'm going to do what others do in radio, which is make believe I, I'm involved, right? You want me to pretend I'm that incensed? I'm not going to do it. And if you hear in my voice that I'm not that incensed, it's because I'm not that incensed. First of all, I'm not going to die for your sins. That's number one. Number two, I'm sick and tired of exposing the raw nerves in my being every day on the radio. I don't think it's necessary. I really don't think it's necessary for me to continue in radio to, to grate the skin, to flay the skin off my, off my body and expose my nerves in order to do a radio show. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I just won't do it. I think that my, my intellect and my analysis is so keen that I could do it in a calm way and you'd still listen. In fact, you might listen more often. That's my, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm in this fake outrage every day. You know, how much can you take of it from others? I don't give you fake outrage. My problem is it burns me up. It gets me so agitated. I don't know how much more I can take of it. And I don't want to. So I've told you what happened. It happened yesterday. Something in me changed. You know, it's funny. If you get older, you think nothing's going to change and you're set in your ways. It's not true. I literally felt, uh, they say the earth moves under your feet or whatever. No, something changed inside of me yesterday. I came to a satori, a realization. I care too much about my show. I maybe overproduce the show. I care about every aspect of the show. I don't care anymore. You know what? Say la vie, whatever will be, will be. That's the way it's going to be. And if you like my personality, my voice, my approach, my analysis, that's what you're going to get. But if you want me to crucify myself on a cross every day, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to change. It's that simple. And that's it. You're going to hear, you're going to hear it in, in my voice. So here's what we're talking about. The Hillary Clinton scandal, legalizing prostitution. I oppose to it for, I'm opposed to it for a number of reasons. The main thing is, is that if you legalize prostitution, you are going to tell young people, mainly girls, but also boys and girls, since gay is now equal to everything else, you'll have young boys saying, you know what? I'm in college now. I need some money. What the heck? Being a hooker is legal. In fact, they'll eliminate the word hooker. I'm sure Jerry Brown's working on striking that out with the word alien. Can't use the word illegal alien about invaders from Mexico and Guatemala, El Salvador, and elsewhere. So why call them a hooker? That could be a banned word in California. So what's wrong with it? I think I'll go yeah, I'll meet someone in a hotel and get some money out of it. Is that what you want for your daughter or your son? So watch out where your, liberals, your liberalism leads you. It may not take you where you want it to go. You got to be careful. There are consequences for certain things, which is why laws were established to prohibit things. It is why the word vice exists. Under Obama, there are no vices other than being a patriot. You get it? This is all contained in the greatest nonfiction book of our time available in October. It's entitled Government Zero on Amazon. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. Everything is fair game. Let's go to line nine. WABC, Mindy, what's on your mind? Okay, I think the first restaurant you're going to eat at, Michael, is Wohop, 11 Mott Street in Manhattan. That's not a plug of any kind. Yeah, I can't wait to go to Chinatown in New York and have once beaten dog over rice or a twice smeared cat over a lamb. I mean, why would I go to that place? What, do you own it? No, I'm a social worker in a school. They don't... A, sway, a social worker who listens to Michael Savage, the right-wing maniac? Uh, you are a right-wing maniac, and I am from the Bronx, Castle Hill Projects. I don't agree with anything you say except about animal rights. However, I respect... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You like the meltdown of our national security. Have you taken any illegal aliens to dinner recently? I respect you too much to argue with you. Well, well no, you respect me too much to know that you're wrong, but your mind is so locked into the 1960s, you can't admit that I make sense, Mindy. The fact is that you know I'm right, but you can't agree with me. But thanks for listening, and I'm not going to woe whatever. I don't want once beaten dog over rice. Thank you very much. But thank you for loving me, even though you disagree with me. More when I come back on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah, turn it off. I don't, I don't want to be emotionally involved with the show anymore. I don't want to be emotionally involved with music that moves me. I don't want to be emo- I don't want it anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Why do I bleed on the radio? What for? Was it good for ratings? I mean, everyone liked to watch people hurt themselves. They think that's great comedy. So I'm just going to look at the stories, have you call. If you want my keen analysis, you're going to get it. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to put on an act for you. I don't know who acts and who doesn't. It's up to you to decide. But it's too much emotion for me. I can't take it anymore. The country is in such damn trouble. And people are so confused, so conflicted, so perplexed of who to blame. They don't know which way to turn. I know which way to turn. Okay, you know my opinions. I've written them for 21 years. Actually, I've written them much longer than 21 years, but you've known me publicly for 21 years on the radio. Think about that. That's a long time. Everyone's heard Michael Savage who has a brain. And some don't like what I say because they don't really listen to what I say, nor do they want to face the fact that they, they have a distorted view of reality. And for those of you, such as the lady in the last hour who called, you know, I was joking, like, what restaurant do you think I'm going to eat in the first night that I'm in New York next week? So she kindly called and said, you're going to go to some uh, Chinese restaurant. And she named it. I said, no, I'm not going to go to have one's beaten dog over rice. So I said, well, why do you listen to me if you're a, a social, uh, a social worker, a left winger? She says, I don't know. I like you. I, I like your animal rights work or something like that. Well, that's good. That's a real thing of mine it has been long before i was in radio they're so innocent aren't they and what's done to animals is so cruel actually the older i get the more it moves me to see the cruelty to animals never mind man's inhumanity to man which is bad enough what the muslims are doing in the oh sorry let me see i have to change the word uh, yeah, what the Muslims are doing to other Muslims, Christians, Yazidis, anyone they get their hands on, the psychopaths of hij- who have hijacked Islam. Is that politically correct enough for you? The, the, the psychopaths who call themselves Muslims, who are carving out an Islamic state while Obama says they're not Islamic, it, uh, as a new level of, of cruelty. Of course, yesterday I told you about what the Japanese Imperial Army did during World War II, experimenting on living human beings, doing vivisection without anesthesia, to show you that man's inhumanity to man, as exemplified by the Islamic State, is almost nothing new under the sun. Man is capable of the most terrible things imaginable. So we turn to our animals, and no nation on earth treats animals better than the United States of America, which shows you what a kind nation we are. And because we're so kind, we're being overrun by illegal aliens, we are being defeated economically by China, et cetera, because we're too kind. It doesn't stop me from being kind to animals. I'm the kind of guy who lets, uh, I have like a, almost there is a, a, a karma thing about animals. You know that? I think I'm going to go into this for a minute and stop talking about Hillary's emails for one second and about whether prostitution should be legalized or not, <clears throat> which is a good topic. I'm so not interested in Chinese yuan, yuan. Like, if I go to Chinatown next week in New York, do you think I'm going to care about the yuan? I'm going to make sure that when I order chicken, it's not dog. I'm going to make sure that when I order, uh, you know, that it's not cat. I don't go to the uh, slime jobs anymore, the slimy hole-in-the-wall places I used to go to. You go in a kitchen in those places, you, you know, you're taking your life in your hands. It's true for any restaurant today. Sure, lavos los manos, right? Right, everyone follows that law. Yeah, right, lavos los manos. I, I just love that one. The only place you can be sure that the manos have been lavos is your own house. I have a friend who doesn't wash his hands when he comes home. I said, he said it's an obsession. It's, it's a mark of a mental disorder to be obsessed with hand washing. I said, no, you're wrong. And he's a very smart guy. He said his wife tells him to wash his hands, and he thinks it's, it's ludicrous that it's good for you to bring home germs from where you went to build up an immunity. Crazy wrong. I read a study, listen to this, 
that the number one thing you can do to protect your health, the number one thing amongst all things is personal hygiene, hand washing, removing shoes when you come into your house. As simple as that because you are bringing, you know, pathogens into your house and touching yourself like your eye. You know, so I don't want to go into it. it's like too too obsessive compulsive and people laugh at you if you wash your hands. I, I've done it. My father did when he came home from work. So it was drilled into me before I ate. I had to wash my hands. Did you wash your hands yet? OK, I'll wash my hands yet. That's when I started to eat before my father came home. So he wouldn't know whether I washed my, my hands or not. I don't want to talk about Hillary's emails. What's the difference? You know, what's going to be is going to be your things are going to go anywhere with Obama's Justice Department. I'm a cynic at the end of the day. I don't believe in anything except, uh, truthfully, what do I really believe in? I believe in survival, number one. I told you that's no secret. I believe first in my own survival. I'd be lying if I told you otherwise. Anyone who tells you otherwise is a liar. If I'm not for myself, who will be? Of course, if I'm only for myself, I would be Hillary Clinton. That's the, the parallel, parable goes that way. So then I project my personal survival to that of the nation. So national security becomes the number one issue for me and economics, number two. All the other stuff isn't that important. Morality, that's up to each of us. You know, I, that's the truth. That's the reality of it. I don't want the government, you know, dictating my morality on, on any level. Sure, I care about some things, borders, language, and culture. What good has it done me? What good has it done me to care about democracy when Jerry Brown has turned California into a, a dictatorship? And Obama has virtually done the same thing. He's not gotten away with it yet, but he's very close to turning into a one-party system. So what should I do? You go on with your life. It's like the ancient Romans, you know, Cato the Elder wrote. You don't know Cato the Elder. I knew him personally in my le several reincarnations ago. I would say in 300 reincarnations ago, I knew him personally. He wasn't a bad guy. He had halitosis and he was overweight and he had fallen arches. But Cato was a heck of a writer. And Cato the Elder wrote that the average Roman does not really care about where the armies of Rome are currently campaigning. They didn't care about the campaigns in Germania. They cared about the pebble in their shoe in ancient Rome. What does that mean? The ancient Roman didn't care about where the armies of Rome were. They cared about the price of wheat. They cared about the uh, price of wheat and things like that, the price of leather. That's what the ancient Roman cared about. Have things really changed? And speaking about the price of wheat and all of that, I was thinking about gluten the other day, and I know an awful lot about the, the insanity of these gluten-free diets. It's just crazy, out of control. You know, if you look at what gluten is, the word itself is indicative of what this protein is and what it does for us. Unless you have overt celiac disease, you're being a lunatic if you think a gluten-free diet is somehow healthier for you. It's a fad like the hula hoop. It's total insanity. And it explains why so many people are weak now. They have denuded our food so badly prior to the gluten-free diet that I don't know what's left in the food. Now they're removing the glue from, from wheat itself. Take the glue out, what's left? Do you know, and it's not directly related as to whether gluten generates. Let's, let, let me jump cut to something else because you'll think I'm making too big a cut. The sperm count of Western males is 50% lower than it was in 1970. Now, it's got something to do with chemicals. It's got something to do with stress. It's got something to do with the use of electronic devices. But it also has a lot to do with diet. How many boys have been raised on fat-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, this free, that free diet where the boys cannot even function. Never mind mentally, their bodies can't even function. Now, I don't wanna go into diet and exercise even though I've just done it. I have my own theories on it. I happen to be an expert in the field and a pioneer in the field. I know people don't like to hear it, but I've written books since 1972 which have been published in the field of diet and nutrition. And I've studied it. I have an actual doctorate in the field from a great university. I've done research in the field. I've published in the field. So I have pretty strong ideas based upon knowledge about diets. And, and uh, I could talk about it, but I don't really think that's of interest to you. Fundamentally, this show is a political show. I get that. And as we become more hyper-political in America, as we should, because we have an overt anti-American, Marxist, communist, America hater ruining the nation, no, we have to talk about politics. Thank God he's on vacation right now. I only hope he stays there until uh, the elections are over in 2016. Is there any way we can ask Mr. and Mrs. Obama to stay in Martha's Vineyard 
for a year and a half. I think the only way the country could survive is if he went on a vacation till uh, November, no, actually December 2016, but that would still give him a 30 days to ruin the country. God knows who he'd pardon. 855-407-282. So I ran a contest in the last hour, given that I'm going to my hometown of New York. You know, one of the things I want to do when I'm in New York, and the weather's good right now, my literary agent is a great guy is going to kind of go around with me because he took me to a great Italian restaurant last time, great Chinese restaurant, which I'm not going to name. He said the weather's good. And Monday night, the minute I get it, I'm going to land late, 839. I won't go out till 10. You know, got to go dump the bags, wash the hands, do the ritual cleansing. What do you do when you get off a plane? Ugh. You talk about washing after, a, after an airplane ride. You don't change your clothes and wash? You don't change your clothing after a, an, exposure, an exposure like that? I burn my clothes. No, I ain't going to go home, sanitize, wash, brush teeth, wash the face, then head out into New York City into the nightlife, 9 to 9.30 at night to eat. So you know, go to some place. I'm not going to mention Where do you think I'm going to go? So the woman called last hour. She said, you're going to go to Ho Fat Ak in Chinatown. I said, no, I don't really want to go to a hole in the wall, and I'm not going to eat once beaten dog over rice. Or twice beaten cat over uh, over spinach. Oh, speaking of spinach, by the way, how many of you raise your hands if you think eating raw foods is good for you? You heard about it, and then you ask why they say enzymes. That's like Bernie Sanders saying I'm a socialist. It has no meaning. What do you mean enzymes? Oh, cooking destroys enzymes. I eat raw. Do you eat raw spinach salad? You're making a huge mistake. Raw spinach is filled with oxalic acid. And the oxalates bind to essential nutrients, which are stolen from your body, that go right out of uh, your in, in your waste products. No, you want to cook your spinach, by the way, and you want to eat even lettuce. Did you know that most lettuces contain oxalates? The only one that doesn't is that long one. I forget the name. It's the only one I liked. I don't. I hate bitter lettuce. I learned about this when I spent years in the Fiji Islands as a um, anthropologist. And they would eat uh, kava, sorry, we would drink kava kava. Drank a lot of it in my day, yes indeedy. Drank much kava kava late into the night with the Fijian folk, sitting up late at night in those straw villages. But the staple of food, by the way, in Fiji, some of the most powerful men you've ever met in your life. They're Melanesian, meaning they're black people. Somehow there was no racism of me sitting in the village. I don't know, and the word racism didn't enter their vocabulary, they didn't have it yet because the values of uh, whatever didn't reach them. But they eat a food called taro, which they call dalo. It's actually an Asian food. It's an Asian tuber. However, I used to watch them cook it. You know how you cook a, a tuber like that? They're saying, what is he talking about? Why is he not bashing Hillary? Because this is more interesting to me than talking about. I'd rather talk about cooking taro than talk about Hillary Clinton's emails right now. You want to get a fanatic foamer on it, I'm sure you can find one. It's probably a fanatic foamer right now going on about emails. So they would take the tuber, cut it up like you cook a potato, and they would boil the water once, throw the water out, put it in water again, throw the water out, boil it again, throw the water out. What were they doing that for, to waste water and fire? They were doing it to rid the taro root of the toxic crystals that I'm talking about, which are contained in many raw vegetables, including your raw spinach. How did they know that you didn't eat the tuber the first time that you'd get sick through trial and error? If they ate it, their kidneys went out. They found that earlier a long time ago. They didn't need to, need, need to read some idiot's book on eating raw vegetables. Another stupid idea that came to you from the hippies of the universe. I shall return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, we're talking about toxins in food, toxins in politics, all aboard. Welcome to the Savage Nation. And I don't want to get hung up on the oxalates and raw spinach salad or talk about how to cook taro. But there's a point to it, which is that a lot of thinking about what's good for you politically and what's good for you on a nutrition front are based upon false information, not even science. It's just hearsay evidence. So as I said, you know, 
taro I was talking about and how they cooked it to rid the, the taro root of oxalates. Calcium oxalates are associated with gout and kidney stones. And if you eat, even if you're eating bitter uh, things such as raw spinach salad, you're not doing yourself a favor. Because these bitter principles are associated with gout and kidney stones. And many guys in particular who are eating raw salads don't realize why they're getting gout or kidney stones. They think, what's wrong? Why am I getting sick? I didn't want to eat like my father, meat and potatoes. So they try to do the right thing and they wind up getting sicker than their father and they don't know why. The only lettuce I eat is romaine lettuce, free of oxalates. You can taste it. You use your own taste. Anyway, let's not talk about it. Maybe I do want to talk about it. I saw an article on the importance of carbs in human evolution and in the paleo diet, which is very interesting because there's such an anti-carb phobia, carbophobia in America right now. Oh, no, I don't eat bread. Why do you mean you don't eat bread? Why? I don't eat bread. I don't eat pasta. Well, it didn't hurt your grandfather. Now, he lived to 47. What was wrong with that? <laughs> I'm going to do that another day because uh, carbohydrates are way underrated. Starches in general, critical for the accelerated evolution of the human brain and would have been a vital part of a real paleolithic diet, suggest researchers. This is a great study, and it came out last week in a food and beverage magazine that I was reading, linked to a quarterly review of biology that's very important, the importance of dietary carbohydrate in human evolution. And I think it's a great, great study. Raw foods are detrimental. Do you remember I told you that when I was in graduate, I have so much I want to say at once. I, I can't do it all. Maybe the ADD is clicking in in my late age. Now, maybe I'm getting rid of the ADD. I want to focus now on, on starches instead of Hillary Clinton's emails. Remember I told you that I was in graduate school and had a seminar, a one-on-one -on -one seminar with one of the great professors. And I had to read... In the original French, The Raw and the Cook by Claude Levi Strauss. Does anyone remember that? Raise your hands. I'm going to give you a gift. Who remembers what I was talking about? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. All right, let's go back to the meat and potatoes. Should prostitution be legalized? Why am I talking about that? Because uh, Amnesty International, a far-left communist front group, approved a policy yes yesterday to endorse the decriminalization of hooking. They rejected complaints from some women's rights groups who say it is tantamount to advocating the legalization of pimping and brothel owning. So at its decision-making forum in Dublin, uh, Amna Amnesty International approved the resolution to, re to recommend this, quote, the full decriminalization of all aspects of consensual sex work. Well, that's quite broad. Some would argue that that would decriminalize marriage, and I've heard that argument, by the way. And I've heard people say that, which is kind of ugly. And say, what's the difference between what women do in marriage and what I do? I've heard that argument. It's not quite the same, by the way. So anyway, uh, Secretary General of Amnesty International said that they're going to use its heft to lobby governments around the world to accept its point of view that uh, decriminalizing of sex trade is good for women. Now, some women's groups freaked out over this. They say that the so-called human rights group has made a serious mistake. For example, a U.S.-based coalition against trafficking in women group has argued that while it agrees with Amnesty that those who are prostituted should not be criminalized, full decriminalization of prostitution would make pimps business people who could sell the vulnerable with impunity. It really is a slap in the face to survivors and to women's rights groups around the world, said a spokesmouth, the executive director of the coalition. Uh, adding that disappointment does not adequately describe a feeling. So I'll let you sound off if you want. Or I could talk about the paleo, the importance of carbs or things like that. W would you favor the legali legalization of prostitution? Would you oppose the legalization of prostitution? I think it's a topic that's long overdue because under Obama, virtually everything has been legalized. The only thing illegal in America is loving America and uh, supporting America. Other than that, it's, uh, it's a laissez-faire. You want drugs? Go ahead and make my day. You want marijuana? Go ahead. Enjoy it. 
You want to drug the children? Go ahead, drug the children. You want to bring in illegal aliens? Go ahead, bring them in. Everything is okay uh, under Obama, except loving America. That Then you're suspect. Then the NSA tails your, your phone calls. Chris, on KSFO, what's your opinion on legalizing or not legalizing prostitution? Mr. Savage, I am pro-legalization of prostitution by a state-by-state -state basis. It shouldn't be something federal. And uh, the reason I am is because, just like you were saying not more than 15 minutes ago, you know, I don't want the government over here legislating my morality. Uh, obviously, there's a difference between someone inflicting harm on someone like uh, assault or murder, which isn't a consensual act versus prostitution. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's up to society to, you know, steer society toward the moral right. It's not, it's not the government's job. It's government overreach to do that. I think you make an interesting argument, but what would the what would the ramifications of the legalization of prostitution bring? Well, you, you know, you can you can make the argument that it would increase people who are doing prostitution, and it would increase people who are partaking in prostitution, as John. But you know, what I'm interested in is like let's look at prohibition of alcohol, for instance. When uh, when prohibition was lifted, did it really make that much of a difference between who was imbibing and who wasn't? So you're arguing that prostitution exists right now, only it's uh, because it's hidden, it's causing more problems than if it was legal. Isn't that what you're saying? But what about the fact that legalizing prostitution will increase the spread of disease? Well, I think if you legalize prostitution, there ought to be some sort of uh, guidelines, you know, through, through whatever medical channels you have. Well, what about those who oppose prostitution because they believe that prostitution is a type of rape because it turns a woman into an object simply for man's use? And, and what about those who argue that prostitution will increase the involvement of sexual predators and the use of minors as sex slaves who will be brought in from terrible areas in the world where people might just give their children over to traffickers to make some money if it's legal. Don't you think all of those are possible damaging effects on, on the human condition? What's that? Well, I thank you for the call. I, I can't repeat myself. 855-407-282. Bob on WABC doesn't believe prostitution should be le should be legalized. He's against it. Bob, tell us why why you think prostitution should not be legalized. Strongly oppose legalization of prostitution. Why would we subject our young, affirmed, and challenged to sexual abuse? So that's it. That's your entire statement. Well, it, it, the cost for um, taking care of the prostitution prostitutes that are subjected to sexual abuse. And the investigation is off the hook. All the prostitutes require medical care if they're sexually assaulted. And they all require a detective investigation if they're sexually abused. Not all contracts in prostitution are abided by. They're subjected to uh, a, um, abuse other than what was agreed upon. So, in other words, if, you were, if the society were to legalize prostitution you would have Eastern European gangs doing what they're doing anyway, but they would suddenly become businessmen, not pimps? Oh, there's no question about it. If you were to legalize prostitution, the Asian traffickers in Chinese women primarily would suddenly be legal businessmen, not grotesque uh, uh, criminal pimps? They're uh, gangsters as, as we speak. But what about the effect on women, per se? Now, we talk about prostitution, incidentally, we shouldn't limit it to women. I mean, we all know that there are male call, uh, whatever they call them. There are male prostitutes, aren't there? Absolutely. And that's throughout every city in New York, uh, every city in the nation. So this would only degenerate the nation even further is, is really what you're saying. Never mind everything else. It would it would devolve the nation morally even further to legalize prostitution is, I think, what you're saying. I'm in com I, I agree with you completely. We're, we're, how can we keep on lowering our standards? Well, Obama has no problem with it. He's lowering the standards in the military so they're going to put women into the rangers who can't even climb a hill and call them a ranger. 
He's going to put women into Marines who can't keep up with men who could run with a, an 80 pound pack. So why not uh, legalize drugs, legalize prostitution, flood America with illegal aliens, don't go to war against ISIS? Whatever works, you know, whatever feels good. If it feels good, do it. Why not do it in the road? You know, it's an extension of the hippie mentality. The only enemy that Obama has is the, is the domestic enemy who opposes the Democrat socialist regimes. All right, so I, I think this is a good topic. But I want to I wanna not play devil's advocate. I never like doing that, but I do want to expose this discussion to a little more nuance, you know, as they might say. You've got prostitution, which is the world's oldest profession, next to p politics. I think, I think that politics may have predated prostitution as the world's oldest profession. So it's one of the world's oldest professions. Let's put it that way. It's ongoing. We all know that there are men who go on sites like Craigslist. If it still does it, I don't think it does. There are sites around that men go on. It's all couch, you know, I don't offer sexual services. And are you a cop? Am I a cop? Are you a cop? Am I a The whole deal, it all it goes on. You got women walking the streets in every city of the country. Not a secret. It's there. Now you have police departments setting up decoys, which I find to be repugnant. I find it a grotesque misuse of police departments to take attractive women cops, put them into tight skirts, have them walk the streets, and then to attract, really bait a guy into making them an offer and then ruining their, to their lives forever. I mean, I find it that this, I used to watch a show on, uh, I forget the guy, Chris Hansen did it, remember? Where it was CBS, uh, I think, I don't know where, NBC. And the guys would, I mean, they were sick guys, you know, at, and they were predators. The fact is, they were predators. They were coming over to kids' houses. It was awful to watch. But a, a strange part of me felt as much sympathy for the poor idiots who were stupid enough to sit there when the cameras are running. They were idiots. And they were entrapped. They were getting the low-hanging fruit of the predator world. I don't think they stopped one person from hurting a child, incidentally. And we all want the children to be protected. Follow me very carefully here. Don't misquote me again. However, I don't think using decoys is a very uh, attractive part of police work. You know, where does this end? How many lives do you want to ruin? Is that arguing for the legalization or the decriminalization? No, not exactly. I think it's a terrible, terrible thing to do. I think it would weaken society. I think it would destroy our children's moral fiber even more if there's anything left at all. But you're going to hear people arguing that we should legalize prostitution. And I think we have to discuss it as adults and not be stuck in our doxies, whether it be liberalization uh, of such an act, at such acts, or let us say a further criminalization. What would you like to do? Arrest men for 20 years for going to a prostitute? Would you like to destroy hookers forever? Women who, are, who will do this because they want to or they have to. And by the way, don't assume every woman who does it does it because they, uh, they have to. Some of them do it because they like it. Incidentally, if you study the psychology of these uh, issues, you'll see there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. And so I'd like to hear your opinions on this. And I really mean this. I think this is great. Let's go to Joseph on WABC on whether or not to legalize a decriminalized prostitution as called for by Amnesty International yesterday. What's your opinion, Joseph? Well, there's no question that it's been around forever, and it should be legal. And the reason why it should be legal is simple. Sex is always going to be, we need to protect our children, certainly, because that they are the ones that are mostly abused. But when it comes to just the fact that people are going to have sex, uh, we need to really just grow up and understand that no one law is going to stop people from enjoying themselves. And the fact that you made up an interesting point, and that point being that you said men are going to take advantage of the poor women. Well, hello. There are more women cheating on their husbands, probably, than men. Women can enjoy prostitution in the same degree. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Now you're really taking this into another direction. You're sort of misogynistic in what you're saying. You seem to have an agenda against women. You don't like women very much, do you, Joseph? On the contrary, they're the greatest thing that God's ever created. Nothing's even close. Nothing. But we need to grow up. It is not... You wait, nothing, wait, hold it. Joseph, listen, I'm listening to you carefully. You like women because they give you pleasure. Is that correct? 
I like women because they're insightful, they're magnificent to look at, at least most of them are, and, and they bring an interesting perspective that most men can't even begin to think about. Uh, that's the reason why behind every great man there's some great woman who's directed him. It's just been around since the beginning of time. But the, the fact wait, 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 hold on, hold on. This is very interesting. Okay, so you respect women for their minds, their perceptions more than, let's say, their minds. The way a woman looks at the world is different than the way a man looks at the world, by and large. Isn't that true? Totally. Absolutely, totally correct. And, yeah. and it fascinates me. You know, I mean, I'm a 66-year-old guy. And, you know, and, and probably... Well, yeah, but I hear the way you're talking and bopping around here that you seem to, uh, uh, I think, indulge in this, uh, in this sphere. Uh, no, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, no, I don't. I mean, I have a, I'm married 40, I don't know, she'll probably kill me, 45 years, something that's great. But, uh, and, and sex has been something that I've enjoyed uh, and never had an issue with. But I have many friends, and some who have partaked in, in prostitution. I don't, even, I don't even like the word prostitution. You know, you should probably be thinking about legalizing masturbation, which is probably more prevalent than prostitution. It seems like this country is, is, is just absolutely enamored with masturbation based on the internet the internet has changed the sexual uh uh sound stage uh, completely it's just totally different and and, and it's, i find it fascinating and you know thank you for your time i, I absolutely adore you your your perspectives are incredible no, wait, hold it hold, joseph this is a family show i'm not into personal uh what do you mean you adore me now it's getting really creepy I'm joking. Come on. Come on. I'm just joking. I like to play with it. Okay, so you're in favor of legalized decriminalization of prostitution. Doubt. Absolutely. With, with government. Okay, so let, well, hold it. Here's, on um, a masculinity factor, isn't Trump's popularity somewhat related to the fact that he's the most alpha male of the pack? You, you know, you're, you're right on. I, I think the whole... Has anyone written that? Any of the geniuses in the media said that? No. Anyway, the great analysts, no, they don't know what, they have no idea what his appeal is. Alpha male, alpha male, alpha male. And who's opposing him on the other side other than Miss Email? You've got the Delta male, Bernie Sandowski, Sandowski. Bernie Sandowski is going to take on Donald Trump. Tell me who wins that one, 90-10. America wants an alpha male to save it and take the world back. That's what they want. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, so look, Amnesty International and all around, what do you call them, socialist group, Approve the policy, which is to endorse the decriminalization of prostitution. Call it, they call it sex workers. That's what they call it for you. I love how they changed the, the language. When they legalized drug usage and using syringes, they call it an injection drug user. You hear? What you would call a junkie, they call it an injection drug user. So, in other words, the man who urinates in the streets of New York is no longer a homeless bum. I guess under the de Blasio administration, they have to rename it. I don't want to play with the words, but you can see where this is going. So now they want to legalize this. What do you think about it? I would like to go to WBAP in Dallas, one of my greatest affiliates. Craig, welcome to the Savage Nation from Dallas, Texas. What do you feel about prostitution? Well, I'll tell you, Michael, uh, I was a sex addict for 25 years. I've been with over 500 different prostitutes, and I just want to tell you that it wrecked my life. It wrecked my life spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And, uh, I, you know, I think that's a libertarian point of view that, that the prostitution should be legal as long as you're not hurting somebody else. It's okay. Well, I want to tell you, it's destructive. It's very hurtful to the how, how did you How did you get out of your sex addiction? I got to the point, Michael, where I was so weak and so broke and so uh, incapacitated by it that I couldn't even perform in it anymore. I couldn't even do it anymore. No, but what cured you? of the of the addiction well you know like i say i basically all right i think this is a good enough topic to hold over to hour three prostitution legalize or not i'll be back join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I don't like this song. I I really wanted to hear uh, the naughty lady of Shady Lane. Welcome to the Savage Nation. And we're talking about the fact that there's a news story. Amnesty International, a certifiably, how shall I say, anti-Western, socialist, New World Order organization, approved the policy endorsing the decriminalization of prostitution. They call it the sex trade. Now, some women's rights groups say it's tantamount to advocating the legalization of pimping and brothel owning. Others say it's uh, turning women into uh, objects. All of these are valid points, but remember that there are male prostitutes as well. Never forget that. Without that, Hollywood wouldn't be what it is. The movies that you have come to love would not be as delightful were it not for the fact that the sex trade is practiced on both sides of the uh, aisle. And so we open it up now to the listeners of the Savage Nation on legalizing prostitution. Agree or disagree? Now we go back to Craig on WBAP in Dallas. Craig, welcome to the program. Are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still with you. Now you say you were a sex addict for how many years? 25 years. And how many prostitutes have you been with? At least 500. You kept count? Uh, well, you know, for a while I could remember about the first 200, and really it was an average about once, one every two weeks for 25 years. So, and, and what happened that led you to see the light where you gave it up? Well, you know, Michael, I can't say that I'm 100% delirious because I still slip up on the Internet every now and then. But I haven't been with a girl in four and a half whoa, years. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean by you slip up on the internet? You mean you look at people and whatever, but you don't go with the prostitutes? No, I mean, I watch porn on the internet, maybe. I slip <laughs> every now and then, but I don't go act it out and go down on the strip here and, and pick up a girl and act, act it out. I don't do that anymore. Okay, but why don't you do it anymore? You didn't, do it for, you didn't stop doing it for moral reasons, did you? Was it medical? Did you get, did you get a disease? Well, I've had some issues, yeah, and I've in the past few years I've become type two diabetic, so you know it's just really the, the physical part isn't really there or, or like it used to be, and um, and really what I, about what about from the point of view of women? Do you think that legalizing prostitution would further dehumanize the women in that in that walk of life? Well, I don't know. That's a tough question. You know, I'll tell you this, the common... It is a tough... See, it is a tough question. Okay, so let's turn the question around another way. You've been with hundreds of prostitutes. What's your analysis of women who go into this business? Do they all do it because they're desperate for money, or do some do it because they like the sex? They do it for the money. And, you know, this buzz from the police that, well, all these poor women were abused and they were children and they they come from... You know, that's a crock of crap. I say in about 75% of cases... I asked these girls, and they said, no, I wasn't abused. No, I, I didn't come from that kind of background. I just, I just, I just like the money, and I like the fast life, and, and blah, 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 blah. Mm, but what about the children who are taken into prostitution against their will, mainly those coming out of China and Eastern Europe? Now you're talking about a completely different ballgame. Now you're talking about something that's completely Yeah, I mean, there, there are girls being forced into prostitution. With the social upheavals going on in the Middle East, the uh, gangsters who were trading in women never had it so good. Well, is that going on in this country or in foreign countries? Well, they're bringing them somewhere. They're bringing them mainly to Europe, I would guess. I don't know. Are they bringing any here? I don't really know. Well, I'll tell you this. It's a, it's a world I know nothing about, but I'm saying since Amnesty International is le- saying legalized prostitution, I said, you know, this is more intriguing to me as a topic than listening to bloviators blowing hard and hot and cold about, about Hillary's emails. We know that the that politicians are practicing the world's oldest profession, probably older than prostitution. But you you say as a man who survived it, it wrecked your life in plain English. Yes. All right. Thanks for the call. He said it wrecked his life. What do you think? You the listener, legal or not legal? Should it be or shouldn't it be? WJR, Amy, go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. What's your perspective? My perspective is hands down not legal. Not legal 
it will only lead to the further debasement of children, most of all. And yes, in response to that last man who was just speaking, it's happening all over America. I don't know if the ISIS thugs have decided to sell children over here, but I'm sure they're working on it. And I just want to, as a sidebar, I am not a feminist. I am not one of those sourpuss feminists. But human trafficking is a big, big, big thing. And once you legalize uh, prostitution, it's only be going to become bigger. So the I think you're making a valid argument, by the way, which is if you were to legalize prostitution, the next thing will be, be, be lowering the age that it is legal to be a prostitute. And that would then open it up the whole world up to the next wave of children being being forced into this to this walk of life. That is correct. And it's already bad enough, Michael, if there's human trafficking going on in this country. All right. I know you're right. It's a fact of life. It's documented. The police know it very well. But there are people who see it another way. And that's a man named Brian on KSFO. Brian, make your point. We want both sides of this discussion right now in the Savage Nation. Yeah, um, I totally disagree with those people. Um, only for the fact that there would be um, innovation and competition in this industry. Uber is a prime example. You know, we see what Uber has done with uh, with uh, the cab industry and how much they're you know how much uh, easier it is to get an Uber than it is for a taxi because these people that have Uber. They rate the driver, and the driver rates the person. So there'd be innovation like that um, in this industry. So you would like to order a car and a woman at the same time? No, no, no. What I'm saying is there would just be innovation and competition. And people own their own bodies. They have the right to do whatever they want with their own body. If but there is arguments against the legalization of prostitution saying that it would uh, increase disease, not decrease it. And also, uh, frankly, it would be more demeaning to women because it would turn them into greater objects than some men already make them into. Well, again, with, for the disease, that's, that's just an issue of responsibility. Just like uh, that Craig guy, he wasted a lot of money, and he was being irresponsible. Um, junkies, well, that's a small portion of the drug population because they're the ones that can't be responsible. <laughs> they're the ones that, not, that aren't responsible. So when you have do you do you indulge in in uh, buying sex services? Oh, I didn't hear that last part. What? Do, have you indulged in in buying sex services from women? No, no, no. No, I'm pretty fortunate. I'm 32. I'm fairly successful. Uh, I take care of my body, um, so I do online dating and go out to bars and clubs, and um, I'm probably with a few girls a month. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, you just made a lot of guys very unhappy, Craig. <laughs> Brian, they're going to go out for the six packs after this one. Okay. So, so that's just it, though. Is what right? Do but what's have? interesting is here you are, a young guy in good shape. You're listening to the show. I'm not belly aching about Hillary's emails. I'm talking about a new story related to legalizing prostitution, and you find it of, in, of interest, which is what I had hoped hap would happen. Because I think talk radio has to be of interest to the listener, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And and one of the big factors here too is that. Um, is, is, again, personal responsibility and what right do we have to tell a person that they can or cannot have sex um, for money um, when they are willingly, you know, entering into agreement to do that? that, that uh, well, well, hold it. Now, there's the rub. Because the issue is willingly engaging in prostitution. You and I both know that there are women who are being kidnapped and forced into prostitution, both in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and in China. Isn't that true? Yes, correct. And that's where we need to separate human trafficking versus legitimate businesses opening up, opening up that provide a product or service. So you're, you're in favor of a state-run brothel? Not a state-run brothel. I'm, I'm for the free market. You know how well they did in delivering the mail. I mean... Could you imagine if, if Jerry Brown opened up legalized brothels? I mean, he's such a liberal. I could see him arguing for it in a few months. And what would it be? The state of California would have state brothels like the DMV? 
no, no. That, 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 that would be... That, that would be something that would just be ridiculous. Well, I mean, you, you know, go to I've, Denmark. Apparently, if you go to, to, to Amsterdam, you can. we've all seen it in movies. The women sit in the windows, and you could select your type. Aren't they sort of state-sanctioned? Uh, state, uh, Do they wear, like, licenses on them, like dogs? Um, yeah, I know they have to go. What, what, does that do, though, to, to, what does that do to marriage? What does that do to a young woman, 17, 18 years old, who walks around in a country and knows that there are women selling their bodies for very little money in in in, in windows. What does it do to the young woman mentally? Well, does she feel does she feel she has to sell herself in other ways in order to get a man's attention? Because she's saying, "Look at this. They could go there and for whatever. I don't know what. I don't have no idea what the prices are. What does it do to the society overall to say that this is an okay thing, Brian?" That's where it boils down to education and uh, having firm and legitimate rules and, and regulations and laws in place that would protect everybody, um, including... You're, you're, you're a young guy. You're 32. You're not, you're not married, are you? No, 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 I'm not. Armour, let's say you, you, be, you get married to one of your bar flings. You fall in love, and she's a great girl, and you date for whatever, and you get married, and... Then, you have a child, and in 15 years, you're 47 years old, 48, let's say 50, till you meet the girl and get married and have a, you know, what would this do to your, you know, 15-year-old daughter? Oh. A legalized prostitution. Put yourself in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the position of a man with children, teenage girls. Do you think a society that legalizes prostitution is a better society for your children or worse? Um, again, education. I, it, it, it's a matter of it's a matter of educating the children properly. And uh, when it comes down to marriage, uh, well, my parents my parents are getting a divorce right now, and you know, thank God I'm not a kid and everything like that. But it's a pretty nasty divorce. Thing is, though, is that how, how many years have they been married? By the way, it's a side note. 30, 36, 36 years. Um, oh, wow, that's a long time. Now it's not, wait. You, you brought that up out of nowhere. It's not related to someone in your father engaging in this is it here's the point is that looking at my parents marriage for the last 10 to 15 years all they did was argue it wasn't healthy it was it was a very one-sided relationship my mom was the breadwinner and she battered my dad a lot i'm not trying to take sides or anything like that but what i'm getting at is that in a marriage there becomes a point in time when people fall out of love or they just don't know how to handle each other anymore um, and sometimes they have to seek other, uh, you know, other uh, company. And no, well, well, hold, hold. so you're you're implying that your father did so? No, he he didn't. But my mom accused him of it. And ah, so this is very personal for you. And yet, although it's alleged by your mom that your father engaged in in, in prostitution, you're still in favor of legalizing prostitution, even though it's affected your family. Um. Well, you know, yeah, so it hasn't affected my family like that, but what I'm getting at is that... When no, I, I, think you were, I think you were hurt by something, and I don't, I'm not a psychologist, but that you jumped on this topic. Here you are, you say you're a good-looking young guy in great shape. You go out and you laugh that you meet a lot of women, and you, you have no problem with sex. You don't engage in prostitution, and yet you think that it should be legal. Why do you believe it should be legal? Tell me why. What benefit would it bring to the society... Uh, at large because first of all I'm a libertarian and the benefit that it would bring is that there would be lonely guys who or women you know vice versa whatever they could go out and you know they may have they may, they may be they may be hating life in fact I, I knew of a I knew of a, a woman who used to be in a business um, and half the time when she would get with guys um, they just wanted to talk. These were married guys. <laughs> they pretty much just wanted to talk because their wife Amazing. listened to them. And Amazing. So, so a lot of them are psychologists, not not body. They're not selling their body. They're selling their mind. So you're making it a noble profession. Well, that and all. They're, they're unlicensed psychologists. In other, you're actually saying that many hookers are unlicensed psychologists. <laughs> right. So 
that's the thing. Is I'm not laughing. I mean, you're, you're telling me an awful lot here about an area you don't seem to know much about, but you seem to know awful an awful lot about something you don't know a lot about. All right, listen, I'm not trying to pull your leg, Brian. I appreciate your forthrightness, and I thank you for calling the Savage Nation. The phone number here is 855-407-282. Question is, legalizing prostitution, yes or no, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, legalization of prostitution, yes or no? I'm totally opposed to it. I'm going to give you the reason why. Put aside morality. Put it aside. Put aside every other issue. Here's what's going to happen. If you legalize prostitution and you make it readily available, take a guess what the, the buyers are going to want other than that which is available legally. They're going to want what is not available legally, which would be what? Younger and younger prostitutes. In other words, children. And then you're going to have more children kidnapped and sold into slavery and sold into prostitution than you already have. And that's why I oppose the legalization of prostitution. I've never read that anywhere. I thought about it during the break and I came up with the ultimately right answer because that's what you rely upon old Doc Savage for. That's your answer. Forget about morality, forget about everything else for the minute. It's available, it's legal, uh, you know what, it's not exciting, I want children. That's what is going to happen. That's what's happening with everything else that's so-called a vice that's legalized. Then they want what's not legal. It's human nature. No, I'm opposed to it. And incidentally, I have very good news for, the, news for those of you who are loyal listeners, who have listened. Michael Savage, Government Zero, just went up on michaelsavage.com with a link to Amazon. I was told by my publisher that although it will be a big printing, the first printing will likely be sold out before it is even going to hit the bookstores. If you want a first printing, please go to michaelsavage.com right now, order a copy of Government Zero, and you'll get a first edition when it comes out. I'll be back. Prostitution, legal or not, that's what I'm talking about. Not emails, not Hillary. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, we're talking about the naughty ladies of Shady Lanes across America. Amnesty International says prostitution should be decriminalized. We are asking you, the audience, what you think about the proposal from this leftist One World Order, uh, New World Order institution. I would put aside all issues. First of all, I'm a sexual libertarian. I've told you that. I have a Rabelaisian view of sexuality, which is do as you will, leave me alone, and don't touch the children. Hands off the children. Because people are going to do what they want anyway. So what's the difference what I think about it? I mean, that's the reality. So I'm, I'm a pragmatist when it comes to things like this. But when you ask me why I oppose the legalization of prostitution, I have told you in the last segment what I came up with in thinking about it, which is this. And I think it's commonsensical. It's simple, very simple. If you make prostitution legal, meaning you're sanctioning it, the state sanctions it then. Once you decriminalize it, you're sanctioning it. You're saying it's kosher, it's okay. See what I'm saying? And so once something is readily available, people want a bigger kick. It's the same with marijuana, and that's why the potency of marijuana has gone up the more it's been legalized. It's not the marijuana that you smoked in the 60s, uh, uh, my friends. It's toxic hallucinogenic marijuana blowing people's brains out because they want a higher and higher kick. Same with prostitution. If it is legalized, sanctioned by the state, it's going to create a market for that which is illegal, and that's going to be children, and that's why you must oppose it. And that's my opinion, and I'm Michael Savage. Now, this topic is very interesting to me. I saw the news story that Amnesty International approves policy supporting decriminalization of sex trade, and I knew about the Hillary Clinton email thing, which I did two and a half hours ago. Everyone can do Hillary Clinton's emails. Everyone has been doing it. Everyone will be doing it. Everyone can do Trump. Everyone can do all day long, day in and day out. I can't listen to it anymore. My mind actually fl floated away from me. I went numb. And I'll tell you something else, a little inside secret. I have a three-hour radio show. Normally, after two hours, the callers peter out. Everyone knows that. 
Ask anyone in the business, which is why they scrape the bottom of the barrel usually in, in the third hour or have the uh, set callers that they all have the phone numbers of. My board is jammed to the rafters right now. So it, it proves the point in talk radio or anything else. If the topic is of any interest, people are going to talk about it. This is of interest to you. You want to talk about it. Let's go to Las Vegas, where legalization is already operating. Here's Greg, KBET, Las Vegas, Nevada. Prostitution, legalized or not? Uh, until I heard your last segment, I was going for it, but I could see your point that it actually is a slippery slope. Okay, but you know what's, inter what's interesting is, Greg, please tell your, your personal story and what you were originally going to say. My daughter uh, was here to go to college, and in her endeavors through college and people she met, she ended up hooked up with a guy who basically pimped her out. And how, how, it, must, it, must have ripped your, it must have ripped your heart out. Is she still doing it? No, no, we got her out. Took me eight months, and uh, but I got her out of it. You know, there's a show on television which glorifies a pimp in Las Vegas, which I find repugnant. I get sick looking at him. There's another one about some pimp from uh, Detroit that gets me sick. They walk around like they're God Almighty. It makes me nauseous. I think they're the lowest form of humanity. Why do they think they're such great guys? I don't know. He's doing 13 years now. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Prostitution is legal in Nevada, but pimping is not? Not in Las Vegas. On I, don't under, I don't understand. Prostitution is not legal in Las Vegas, or it is? It is not. Oh, okay, so it's legal outside of Vegas in the surrounding yeah. communities. Like Perot. So, so, that's, so that's why when you walk the streets and you have these people handing out these cards, these are for brothels outside of Las Vegas? Uh... I think that's a scam myself. You know, oh. women come to your room and do whatever. You know, something. You know, you walk around Las Vegas and you see the the cards all over the street of half naked women. It's kind of not really great for the for the neighborhood, so to speak. <laughs> and yet, people bring their kids there. I I don't know what it would be like to bring a, a a young person through Las Vegas with all of that pandering going on. You know. All right, one man's opinion, next man's opinion. They all count. KBET, Las Vegas. Again, Jack, your opinion counts. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, hello. Um, okay, so if I could digress for, for one minute. First of all, it is not legal in, in Nevada or in Las Vegas. It's Pahrump, which is 60 miles outside Las Vegas. Well, 61 miles. Not that I would know, but it's... <laughs> okay, you probably know it to the exact mile, but go on. <laughs> I can't say that I've been there, but I can't say that I haven't been there. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, All right, so what, what's your position on legalizing prostitution? I really don't think it's going to degrade uh, to a higher and higher thing, like marijuana, for example. Um, I mean, everybody with half a brain knows that the medical marijuana thing was a scam from the beginning. I mean... Right, th exactly. And it was pushed by... Not, by the way, just as a side note, it was pushed by none other than George Soros, who is funding the riots in... Uh, Ferguson, Missouri, to the tune of thirty-six million dollars through front groups. But go on on uh, legalization. Do you you make a very good point on the board? You say sex is not illegal. Why should selling it be? Isn't that what you're saying? You can give it away. Why is it illegal to sell it? You have you know it's a basic economic uh, situation. You have a willing buyer and a willing seller. Um, and no, wait, what do you mean you can give it away? You're, you're implying that marriage is prostitution. Saying a woman can can give it away. Why can't she sell it if she owns her body? I've heard the argument. I've heard the argument before, and I've heard. Pro I've heard. I've read of prostitutes. I've heard of prostitutes on shows, who have said, "What's the difference between me in the street selling it, and a a, a a married woman sleeping with a husband that they don't like just for the benefits of marriage?" Isn't that what you're saying? Yeah, well, and the other thing is, you say that uh, you know the exploitation factor, and I, I understand that there are some women that that are exploited, but to me. It's the pimp that's doing the exploiting, okay? And if you take the, if you legalize it, you kind of take the pimp out of the equation, don't you? Well, but if you legalize it, you're turning the state into the pimp. By the way, you had mentioned what if the state ran, ran the brothel. Well, the IRS did run a brothel in Reno, and they ran it into the ground, literally. 
<laughs> so they, they couldn't even do that right. They couldn't. They can't deliver the mail on time. They can't make the trains run on time, and they can't deliver a prostitute on time. That's your government at work, huh? It's amazing, unbelievable. So, w w Jack, what business are you in? You're not going to say. I, I, I really don't. I, I prefer not to say. Let's just say that I've been in Las Vegas for a long time. And uh, okay. What what hotels do you own? Ha 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 ha. By, by the way, uh, I've got a nickname for Harry Reid, just as a, a diagnosis. <laughs> oh, and wait a minute. Hold it. We've got to create a, a, some sound differential between what we're talking about and what you're about to say. I don't what think this man, wait, What this man is about to say has nothing to do with prostitution. Go ahead, please. The Desert Cyclops. The what? Desert Cyclops. Why? Oh, stop. That's not nice. Um, he, by the way, what happened to that? How did that happen? Was that a, an accident from a... A rubber thing breaking in the gym, or anybody believe that? No, it's no. It looked it looked like a terrible, terrible uh, something happened to him. My theory is that he got drunk and fell down the stairs, but who knows? Yeah, well, I think you've been watching too many movies. <laughs> That's possible. All right, Jack. You, I, I can read between the lines of your of your voice. <laughs> we don't have to go any farther. Thank you for joining the conversation. WFTL in. Uh, Fort Lauderdale. Tommy, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, I'm sitting at my desk and I'm listening to everybody talking about what their experiences have been. And I've had a, the, the luck of having a business where it took me everywhere, South America, Europe, and I've, I've lived in countries that it isn't illegal, where that's such as Amsterdam. I spent eight years in Amsterdam walking through the red light district at night. I spent eight years in Buenos Aires where they wink and nod and it's not legal, but you can find places throughout the throughout the city that is illegal. And one comment that that guy before me said about he has money, and money has no nothing to do with it. It's not about whether or not you have money and you don't want to buy sex. It's about the thrill of it. It's about what it does, and I, it's ru ruined two marriages of mine. And it, I'm very careful about what I want to say on the air before millions of people, but it is it will ruin this country. Amsterdam has been able to control it because Holland has three million people, and it isn't sanctioned by the state, but they are a member of unions. They do go, they get shots, they're treated with the health card, they have cards that say that they're legal. But it's not state-sanctioned, it's, it's collected, it's taxed, just like the drugs are. But it, it's, it's, I mean, in, Amsterdam, in, in Argentina, it's horrible what it's done to villages in Argentina and Buenos Aires. And hold, hold on, you're saying that, okay, let me see, if I, I think I know what you're saying. Legalizing prostitution has decimated villages what because the poor families bring their daughters to the city and peddle them well not necessarily that and when i say villages i play a is by no means a village if they call it the paris of south america there's 15 million people in grand buenos aires and you, you're you're starting at 16 17 18 years old because of the fact that they've been devalued the pace has been devalued over the last 10 years, and you have people that are just, well, I mean, it's the very, I mean, the, the Pope's from there. All right, so you're confirming my suspicion, which is that once you sort of legalize prostitution, people want younger and younger girls, and that is a devastation. It's even legal, and it's gotten to that in that country. And, and, and again, and you talk about the sex slaves, and you go into to Amsterdam, all of them are from Eastern Europe. Every one of them that are in there are from Poland, Czechoslovakia, Slovakia. I mean, you, you name it, every prostitute that is in the red light district, I can almost guarantee you 90% of them are from sex slaves brought in from Eastern Europe. Uh, you just said you said sex slaves, didn't you? Well, I did, because there are there's shows. You go to the Banana Club, you walk, and I don't think they're there. Well, a certain amount of them probably do like it, but I guarantee you that they were brought there under nefarious reasons. They were told X, and they had to do Y, and they end up living there. After them... I mean, it's an exception. I've lived in Switzerland. I've been in Zurich. I've been in the Geneva. Where you walk through the hotels, they're sitting in the lobbies of the hotel. I'm talking, you know, five-star hotels. Where you walk in, and it's a wink and a nod. The bellhop doesn't care. The, the, you know, nobody cares. It's done. It's looked the other way. And it's, I can guarantee you that sex is, or prostitution is not legal in Switzerland, but it's going on. Mm -hmm. So your bottom line is, Tommy, that, that you feel it does lead to a slippery slope. They do draw in younger and younger uh, girls and it's a devastation for the overall society to legalize prostitution. Is that a fair summation? I, I, it's, it's not. It hits the nail on the head. It ruined my life. I can only speak for me personally. Well, what, why did it? How did it ruin your life? 
I was married for 17 years. I had four children. It led to a life that's solid. And, I, and, and again, it's not about money. I was making close to seven figures. It wasn't about the fact that I couldn't have sex with somebody that wanted. It was, it was just the fact of flying all over the world and being able to do this. It, it just, I mean, you're, you're, the fact that you go down that slippery slope and a man cheats on his wife, once it's done once, it becomes much easier to do it again and again and again. And then when you don't want to buy it, it leads to other addictions such as what? Like the guy said, going on the Internet, looking for whatever's on the Internet. And before you know it, you become inhumane. You become insensitive to the touch, insensitive to everything. It becomes robotic. And, and, and as I said, if you're going to make it easier, you're going to ruin people's lives. You're going to, you're going to actually diminish the sanctity of sexuality even further. Okay. In a society where sex is almost a currency, you're going to turn it into a cheaper currency. Tommy, that's an amazing call, and I want to thank you for it. The Bible has a word called the harlot, by the way. And so if you legalize prostitution, should we throw the Bible out now because it's offensive? It's another banned word, hooker, prostitute, uh, whore, harlot. Should they burn Bibles now because it offends harlots? How is the faithful city become a harlot? She that was full of justice, righteousness lodged in her, but now murderers. The silver has become dross, the wine mixed with water. The princes are rebellious. And companions of thieves, everyone loveth bribes and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them, said Isaiah. So the word harlot is very much in the Bible. It's in our language. It's canonized in our law. And now Amnesty International, who has tried to destroy Every society it's touched under the guise of being good and decent wants to legalize prostitution. And yet people think it's not such a bad idea. And yet if you look at the overall moral degradation it, it uh, brings in its trail, it's not simply a libertarian uh, viewpoint that should prevail. And I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. All right, everyone can and will talk about Hillary's email server. God bless them. It's easy to do. Boring as far as I'm concerned. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But when it comes down to a human beings, you know, it's the pebble in the shoe. And I touched a raw nerve today in talking about should prostitution be legalized. And the reason I have is because the leftist organization, Amnesty International, approved the policy supporting the decriminalization of, of the sex trade. And the calls are jammed up. I don't even have time to get to all of them right now. I'm probably going to do it again tomorrow. And I'm actually going to ask people in this field, if you want to call it that, to call the show. Because I have a very strong belief, just through common sense, that once a vice is legalized, people want something more exciting, something outside the legal norm. And what they will look for are children. And it will destroy the societies of the world at an even greater rate. That's how I see it. And although I'm a sexual libertarian, I'm also a realist as to what certain activities lead to. And so when you talk about legalizing drugs, what does that really mean? What does it really mean? The legalization of marijuana, do you think it's decreased the use of drugs or increased it? Well, it's, it's increased the use of drugs. It's increased the demand and the desire for a more potent forms of the toxic marijuana. Many emergency rooms can confirm this. People don't want it, the, the marijuana that you may have smoked when you were young. They're 20 times stronger. They're like taking peyote or LSD. People are getting stoned out of their minds and very sick. And so common sense would dictate that there are vices that should be, that should remain illegal in plain English. Now, does that mean that the law should not be analyzed? talk about it tomorrow never forget government zero on michaelsavage.com